Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got the final Madden 22 top 10 player ratings for you guys today. Quarterbacks. This is probably the most controversial every year, mostly because this is the most high profile position. So I'll get into that in a minute. But if you guys want to see me continue this series when team ratings come out, do me a favor, as always, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. I also want to do a video where I basically highlight what I thought were the worst Madden ratings out of all these that came out. I might do that for tomorrow. So hit the like button if you want to see that. Also, be sure to let me know in the comment section what you guys think of this list. And other than that, let's go and let's get right into it. Starting off at number one, we have Patrick Mahomes joining the 99 Club once again. This is about as surprising as when Aaron Donald joins the 99 Club every year. Uh, there's no real uh, surprise here. This is guy, he's the best quarterback in the league. He, is, he has been. Been. Uh, he's, I think he's only like 25 too, which just makes this ridiculous because he's been at the 99 club level for like three straight years now. Uh, but there's no surprise for me uh, when it comes to Patrick Mahomes. Um, he's one of my personal favorite players in the entire league, and he should be just about everybody's. I mean, he's just such an amazing talent. That being said, there's two players on the Chiefs offense alone that are 99 overall players between him and Travis Kelsey. And then Tyreek Hill came in at a very close 98. So he just lets you know how overpowered that offense will be uh, the only other team that has two nine there's only five nine on overall club players this year and two of them are on the Chiefs two of them are on the Rams defense and Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey so it's kind of crazy to think that only three teams get to enjoy a 99 overall player I know what me personally I think that Derrick Henry should have been a nine on overall player but let's not get into that like I said if you guys want to see a, a list of the most you know underrated or worst rated players hit the like button and let me know in the comment section moving on on the number two we have Tom Brady now this here I can't say I necessarily have an issue with Tom Brady being the number two overall already quarterback especially considering that he's also on the cover it's typical that EA likes to push their cover athletes but I do personally feel that Aaron Rodgers deserves to be at least the number two quarterback and at least have a higher rating than a 96 now with that being said I went through the stats to basically, you know, find something for my argument. And I mean, just Aaron Rodgers was MVP last year. I shouldn't need too much to convince you that that's probably how it should be. Aaron Rodgers is a player who's typically been underrated by EA year in and year out. Uh, it's always come up, why is this guy not being rated as high as he should be rated? And this year doesn't really feel any different. If you compare his stats to last year's, just Tom Brady's stats to last year's. Because ultimately, if you, you could go back a couple years when Tom Brady was in New England, his stats were were kind of uh, fading as the Patriots really weren't, su you know, supporting him with weapons. But just last year alone, I mean, number one, Tom Brady probably has a much better receiving core, much better weapons around him, even though it's not night and day. It's pretty close because uh, Aaron Rodgers does have some pretty good weapons. But if you just look at the quarterback rating alone, Aaron Rodgers was close to the record, the NFL record, his own NFL record, by the way, when it comes to quarterback rating with a 121.5, the NFL record being 122.5, which was him in 2011. So he played on that near of an historic level to the point where he was just, he was just like, out the guy is a surgeon out there then you compare passing touchdowns and interceptions he had 48 touchdowns to five interceptions where Tom Brady had 40 touchdowns to 12 interceptions now it would have been interesting to see if Aaron Rodgers would have actually gotten the cover which was rumored that Aaron Rodgers was supposed to be the cover athlete uh, well the issue really was that they didn't want to put him on the cover in Green Bay and then he got traded uh, to, to Denver. That was the rumor that Aaron Rodgers was supposed to be the cover athlete that Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes kind of was like the backup plan. We'll never really know if that was truly the case, but I tend to believe it. I mean, rumors just don't come out of nowhere. I think that it makes too much sense. It would have made way more sense to have Aaron Rodgers on the cover than basically split the cover between two previous cover athletes, like especially recent cover athletes like Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. So that's something that made a lot of sense to me. So continuing down the list, and there they then have Russell Wilson at number four with a 94 overall. Kind of hard to complain. Those guys are pretty consistent. They're all veterans. They're all considered probably the top four quarterbacks that are in the league right now. Then you have a pretty big drop off, and this is where I started to have a little bit of issue. Uh, Lamar Jackson's rating went down. I could have swore his rating uh, was higher in previous years. At the moment, it's a 91. Really not that bad. Uh, Deshaun Watson then at a 90. I'm not really sure what his status is for the game, uh, given his uh, current legal situation. Uh, can't really complain there. Uh, but then the bottom four. For some reason, it's always at the bottom where I have the most issues when it comes to the bottom of the top 10. 
And I would say, number one, Josh Allen played at such a high level last year. I really feel like an 88 overall is is kind of, it's he's still kind of under what he should be. Now, I know last year was really the first year that he broke out. And if you look at these ratings, they're typically based off of consistency. And EA is really trying to look at these like a power rating. So having him at an 88 after just one really strong year isn't really that bad. But I just thought that he should be closer to a 90 if not above 90 because a lot of things like his physical stats he's got a 99 throw power and he's got you know a lot of things his deep accuracy should be one of the best in the game um you know things like that i mean this guy i feel like he probably should have been pushing a 90 but uh, i'm not going to complain too hard because his year last year I mean, he did have a higher quarterback rating than tom brady by five points and he's definitely leading one of the most explosive aerial attacks in the game um, but I feel like he should have been a little bit higher because he's only a point ahead of guys like Dak Prescott and Ryan Tannehill, who are guys that are really thought of as uh, products of their offense. Dallas and, and Ezekiel Elliott for so many years really made Dak Prescott. I know in recent years, the receiving core, I feel like, makes Dak Prescott look a lot better. But Ryan Tannehill's kind of in that boat where it's like he's looking at one-on-ones all game because of King Henry. Guys like that, I don't feel like you know they should be even close to Josh Allen because Josh Allen carries the Bills. I mean, he, they don't even really have a good running attack. It's Josh Allen and that amazing receiving core just carrying that team. Um, so to me, they're, they're they're not a point apart. To me, they're several points apart. That's a huge. That should be a huge drop off between the top seven quarterbacks in this game. That's that's where the drop off should start. So to me, having Josh Allen, I think he should be a little bit higher. Um, the one guy that I think should be after Josh Allen, in my opinion, should be Kyler Murray. By the way, I think Kyler Murray's a guy that's sorely missing from this list. He had 37 touchdowns last year, rushing and throwing, and he also had just under 5,000 total yards between passing and rushing. So I, I would probably have Kyler Murray uh, right after Josh Allen. And then, because he's another guy who kind of carries that team. He's not carried by a run game or carried by his weapons the same way that Dak Prescott and Ryan Tannehill are. So I agree that Dak Prescott and Ryan Tannehill probably deserve to be on the list. I'd probably have them closer to like 86 and maybe an 85 for Tannehill. And then I wouldn't have Matt Ryan on the list at all. I would probably have Kyler Murray coming in at like an 87 or an 86 ahead of those two guys. But that's pretty much how I would have the list. I don't really think they're missing on too many guys. Another guy that uh, I think um, had an amazing year is Justin Herbert. But I don't really think that off of one good season that you typically make these lists. I mean, he'll probably be like an 82 or an 83 or something like that. Not enough to break the top 10 quarterbacks list off of just one good season. Because he could easily go right back down to earth. Like I said, a lot of this is based off of consistency. Which he doesn't necessarily, he hasn't been had the opportunity to show yet because he's only played one year. So that's it. That's the list. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section. Uh, and if you want to see, like I said, more ratings lists like this in the future, do me a favor, hit the like button. And let me know in the comment section as well. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. I'm going to shout out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.